Hey, my life is getting boring now. What's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite movies. And today I'm going to be talking about the uh, Cannes or, or Gang Film Festival 2022. So, uh, yeah, I've never actually made a video on the Cannes Film Festival before because, uh, you know, it's it's not as fancy and not as popular as the Oscars and Golden Globe and Emmys and whatever. But, um, and as you can tell, I'm, um, I do keep up with the awards, you know? And in fact, my first video ever on this channel is me talking about the Oscars. But as time goes by, I began to lose more and more interest in the Oscars and the Emmys and the Golden Globes and the Grammys, but more on things like this. Cannes Film Festival, Venice Film Festival, Toronto International Film Festival, South by Southwest, Telluride Film Festival, and whatever film festivals there are, because these are the ones that are actually important. I mean, the Oscars are very prestigious, don't get me wrong, but they're not legit. If you think about it, they're not actually legit. If you work in the film business, you would know that Cannes Film Festival is the peak, is the one on top. Because every single year, there are a bunch of filmmakers who would premiere films in this film festival and they would join the competition. And these films are never seen by the public. But for the Oscars, some of the films nominated are already seen by the public. And so uh, the Cannes Film Festival is the real deal. It's the real deal. And the Palme d'Or, the number one award of the film festival, is like, man, like if I ever win a Palme d'Or, I would, I would be even happier than if I win an Oscar. That's, that's what I'm saying. All right. Now, uh, I'm no expert because I haven't seen any of these films before, but uh, let's talk about the Cannes Film Festival winners because it has just been announced earlier this morning. Now for the short film Palme d'Or, we have The Water Murmurs. Never heard of it, but... I will watch it because I really care about making short films now. Short films are kind of my thing now, you know. All right. Camera door. Ooh, camera door. Uh, the camera door uh, goes to War Pony, directed by Gina Gamble and Riley Keough. I'm sorry if I mispronounced names here. Um, so this, I believe, is the award for um, cinematography, which is very important. I just got off my film cinematography, cinematography class on Zoom this morning and it went back to bed. Um, so um, I would really love to check out War Pony. Let's see what it's about. War Pony is a drama. Okay, that's... I don't even know if it's gonna get a US release which is funny. Wow, my internet, I love it, I love it. All right. Come on. I love it, I love my internet. It's just, yes. Okay, there we go. Um, not much else. Is War Pony in black and white or is it in color? Is it in color? Okay, anyways. Uh, best screenplay, Boy From... Ooh, I already spoiled it. Boy From Heaven, uh, which is a film that, of course, I haven't watched, but... Uh... Ooh, oh, okay. So Boy From Heaven is a thriller about Adam played by Tafik Barhom, a young man from a fishing community in Northern Egypt who receives a grant to study Islamic thought at Cairo's prestigious... Um, only to become embroiled in a conspiracy to elect the next grand imam. Wow, all right, I'm interested. Um, this is a very important award because last time, uh, last year, this award went to Hamaguchi Ryusuke with Drive My Car, which ended up becoming one of my favorites of the year. So, a boy from heaven. I'll write that down. All right. <laughs> Woohoo! Best director, Pak Tanu, decision to leave. Yes! Yes! Um, has Pak Tanuk ever won a can? No, he hasn't. Has it? 
Has he ever won? Okay, hold on. Accolades. Has has Pak Tanu ever won Best Director at Cannes? Because I know Pak Tanu has frequented Cannes before. Uh, we have um. Come on. Um. Oh, he did win the Grand Prix with Old Boy. So that's that's really cool. Um. He did won the jury prize for Thirst. And um, he did, in in fact, indeed, uh, got nominated for Palm d'Or and the Queer Palm for The Handmaiden. And, uh, but he hasn't won Best Director yet. He's won the jury prize. He's won the Grand Prix. He's got nominated every time, pretty much, um, but uh, wow, best director Pak Tan Wook. This is this is good. This is good. This is good. He deserves it. I'm really hyped up. I'm, I hear Neon's picking up Decision to Leave, so I hope there's going to be a U.S. release. If there isn't going to be a U.S. release, I hope it releases in Hong Kong at the time I visit. So in December or next January or um, this summer, which I think is highly unlikely. But um, yeah. Best actor goes to Song Kang Ho. Oh my God, Korean sweep, the Korean sweep. Uh, I actually did learn about this before I go to bed because this is like the first award or, or like it's one of the earlier awards. But uh, Song Kang Ho has finally received the best actor award that he very much deserves. Uh, in the year uh, Parasite got nominated, uh, went into competition for Cannes, he didn't win. Um, but at last he won for something with Broker, uh, which probably means Broker is not going to win Palm d'Or. Now that Broker got a win for Best Actor, it's probably not going to win Palm d'Or because, um, again, Cannes Film Festival is way more unpredictable than the Oscars. The Oscars, you can kind of predict what they're going to give. They're going to give the, the safer film. They love English movies. They love uh, movies with a lot of diversity and representation in it. Um, but um, Cannes Film Festival is so much more unpredictable. They gave one to Parasite, amazing. And then next year they gave one to Titan, which is a huge deal because usually film festivals just like genre films, like horror and comedy. Uh, they don't like genre films, but for some reason they gave one to Titan, uh, which uh, Spike Lee has spoiled, um, but it was a huge deal. All right, best uh, best actress goes to a uh, holy spider, Zar Amir Ebrahim Ebrahimi for Holy Spider. Damn. All right. Oh, 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 spoilers, spoilers. So Holy Spider is the uh, crime thriller film directed by Ali Abbasi, based on the true story of Saeed Hanai, a serial killer who targeted sex workers and killed sixteen women. Oh. Um, I haven't heard many great things about this film. In fact, I heard that it's not really all that great, but hey, maybe the performance is great, so. All right, jury prize went to uh, two films, it's tied. Went to Io and Le Otto Montan. So Io, I, mm, Io is, I believe, um, the uh, Al Hazard Baltazar remake. Um, and Al Hazard, Balthazar is uh, the film by Robert Presson, um, which is um, a film where the main character is a donkey. And now we have Io, which is um, a Polish film that is a remake of Al, Al Hazard Balthazar. And um, I mean, I'm not huge on remakes, but if it's good, I hope it's good. I hope, I hope it's good. I'm not huge on remakes, but I hope it's good. Especially remake of art house films. Like, I'm always not very certain about that. Uh, and then we have uh, Le Otto Montan, which is uh, The Eight Mountains. Mm, all right. The Eight Mountains is a 2022 Italian film directed by Felix van Gruningen. Wow. Very Italian name indeed, and Charlotte van der Meersch. 
Okay, so they're both Dutch. Um, but it's an Italian film nonetheless, and it's adapted from a screenplay from the novel of the same name by Paolo Cognetti. And it's a friendship between two men who spend their childhood together in a remote alpine village. Eh, based on the synopsis, I'm not huge on it, but maybe it's really good. If, if it wins the jury, uh, jury prize, it's probably pretty good. But eh, alright, here we go. Special prize for Cannes 75th anniversary. Uh, the Dardon brothers with Tori and... L Lokita. Um, I believe the Dardon has won like two palm doors already. So, I mean, they really love the Dardon brothers, do they? They really love the Dardon brothers. Um, they won for the kid with the bike, I believe. Okay. Okay. So they won a palm door for Rosetta, and they won another for L'Enfant. And uh, they pretty much got nominated every time. Or they, they pretty much win something every time. Uh, Young Ahmed for Best Director. Uh, Ecumenical Jury for Two Days, One Night. Grand Prix for The Kid with a Bike. Best Screenplay for Lorna Silence. Special Mention for The Sun. Yeah, they, they love the Dadon Brothers. I'm not huge on this though. I don't know. Grand Prix goes to... Oh! What? Okay, so it's a tie again, and it's close by Lucas Don and Stars at Noon by Claire Denis. Um, I was honestly expecting close to win the Palm d'Or. Um, but the winner went to uh, Claire Denis uh, and, and Lucas Don for Grand Prix. Um, again, I haven't heard a lot of great things about Claire Denis. Don't get me wrong, she is a fantastic director, even though I haven't seen a single film from her. Uh, but from what I've heard, she's amazing. She made tr uh, Beau Travail, uh, which is on Criterion uh, and close. Um, so for the Palme d'Or winner, of course, we have the big three. We have Pak Tanuk's Decision to Leave, Korea Da Hirokazu's Broker, and uh, David Cronenberg's Crimes of the Future. And of course, the most popular one is the Cronenberg film because, oh my God, Cronenberg is back with the body horror. Um, but... Out of the three, the one that's most likely to get it is Broker. And I really want to see Broker getting it. Um, but Koreeda has already won once for Shoplifters. And um, I don't know. I don't know. So a lot of people are also saying, oh, maybe it's going to be Close by Lucas Dom, which I've seen the trailer of. It's a really beautifully shot film about friendship during childhood. That seems really wholesome and nice. I want to watch it. Um, and a lot of people are also saying um, maybe it's going to go to Claire Denis, but no, both of them won the Grand Prix, which means the Palme d'Or is a uh, Triangle of Sadness by Ruben Östlund. Östlund. Um, wow. All right. Um, didn't see this one coming. Again, it's, it's basically pointless to try to predict who's going to win the Palme d'Or. Satirical film written by Ruben Erstlund starring Harris Dickinson, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so it's an English language film. Um, yeah, The Square won The Palm Door. So this is Ruben Erstlund's second Palm Door. Uh, okay, I'm interested. Um... You know, if, if he can win a second Palm d'Or, Koreeda can win a second Palm d'Or too, you know? Just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you know? Because I met a guy in USC when I watched uh, Lan Yu, and uh, he is a Hong Konger, and he's also a film master's degree. Like, he's studying in the film master's program in USC right now, which is absolutely insane. The fact that someone exists. Someone from Hong Kong who's also a film lover in USC. What are the odds? And he told me that his favorite director is Koreeda. So I'm like, man, I need to watch a Koreeda film ASAP. But uh, yeah, these are my thoughts on the um, Cannes Film Festival winners. What are your thoughts? Which one of these films are you excited to watch the most? I heard ne so Neon already has Crown of the Future. It's picking up Broker. It's picking up Decision to Leave. The big three is already picked up by Neon. And hopefully it'll get a US release at some point. Um, but um, I'm also interested in watching Triangle of Sadness, Close, um, EO, if only I've watched Al-Hazard Baltazar, 
and born from heaven. So, um, yeah.